Today I fucked up by not realizing that the MRI technician could hear me. Today I fucked up by not realizing that the technician could hear me. Back in February my arm started hurting so I went to the doctor and he told me to rest it. It still hasn't healed so he scheduled me for an MRI today. I arrived and got all set up and the tech told me she was training a new girl. They asked me to lay down Superman style and then strapped down my arm. It really hurt but I figured I could suffer for a little while. She then put headphones on my head and asked what kind of music I wanted. I replied that anything but country was fine. She turned on the music and it was country so I asked her to change it and she did to 80s. She then put me in the machine and left. That's when I realized that the headphones were just a little too tight and the music just a little too quiet. You know how when you can make out what the song is but not quite make out the words. I also realized that I was becoming claustrophobic. So I'm living through my own small slice of hell when the song ends and then the same song starts playing again. And again and again. Blondie Heart of Glass on infinite repeat for 45 minutes. Now I didn't realize that they could hear me in the other room and when I get nervous and uncomfortable I tend to fart. Not silent, but loud ripping sounds like I need to change my pants earth shakers. I'm nervous. I'm in pain and I'm being tortured by not quite loud enough music and the loud thrumming of the machine. After a while I started making up words to the music about how gassy and uncomfortable I was. Occasionally, the technician would speak to me through the headphones and tell me how much longer I had left and her voice sounded strained but I figured it was because of the bad acoustics. Finally, the torture is over and they pull me out and I let them know that the music has been on repeat. They then tell me that there is a microphone in the machine and that they can't hear the music but next time let someone know. That's when I realize I've been ripping ass for the last 30 minutes and they could hear everything. I've never been so mortified in my life. Too long didn't read, I suffered through auto and physical torture while ripping ass for 45 minutes and singing about it because I was too stupid to realize there is a microphone in the MRI machine. As a former radiology employee, not a tech, I heard hundreds of these stories. Literally hundreds in the spam of two years. It's so common. We laugh at them, but never the patient. It was honestly the best thing to cope with the stress of healthcare. So thank you flatulent soul. You are the hero here. I had a scan done where I couldn't move at all. Tech puts on a CD and leaves the room for 30 minutes. But wasn't even in an observation room, was off seeing other patients. The CD started to skip 5 minutes after she left was hell. Wait, there was no technologist at the console while you were scanned? That is not proper procedure at all. I've literally been in hundreds of departments over my career and I have never seen that. Those motorized step tables are powerful, things could happen, if for no other reason that practice is crazy. It's for farts, you really think you're going to shock the average tech with gas? Most of us have been shat on, puked on and bled on. Back in the day when we wore shoes not sneakers, it was only the newbie that chose wingtips for barium work. That's fucking hilarious man. Once I had love, and it was a blast. Then everyone heard while I ripped ass. Seemed it was all good, and I was allo o one. Then they got to hear my ass trombone. At least you didn't shit yourself ha ha. Today I fucked up by giving my best friend a place to stay when he was essentially homeless. So this happened a while back but I was told it was best to put it hers. During university, me and three friends and fellow students formed a band, and we basically spent a few years smoking pot and playing gigs across the UK. Our friend Jay became our driver, and we did pretty alright. It had a couple of bad breakups and had spent some time on casual dates but nothing major, when Jay introduces me to his housemate B. She's great, and me and her hit it off and start dating. Now she's not a big fan of H, my bass player, as they all take the same course and she thinks he's a cock, he was, but it was endearing if you knew him, everyone has a friend like this I think. Anyway, after about a year and a half, we all decide to move to another city. The band's doing really well and we want to be somewhere we can get more shows, so we made the move. She asks me to move in with her there. Red lights go off for me. I really like her but I'm not sure I'm adult enough to live with her at this point, but I decide to swallow that down as I don't want to be that guy. Things are okay there, not great but okay. 
We argue a bit, but mostly it's fine. H however, doesn't find a place to stay, and he's loath to move home with his folks, they're very middle classed, and well, he's a bit of a rat, and enjoys the rat life. So I say dude, you're my best bud, come stay with me. B isn't overly happy, but her and him have buried the hatchet and become good friends so she agrees. Now I work a part time job up the road, and occasionally come home from work for lunch. They don't work, and hang out with each other during the day, but nothing seems sinister. Me and her start arguing more, and he gets weirdly defensive about it when I try and talk to him, saying that our arguing is bothering him, and he moves to his own place finally. Things become rocky between me and B, and some things happen in between that create a distance between us. Then one day I suddenly realize what the problem is. She tries something new in the bedroom, and I'm like wow, okay, that's new. Fair enough. Two days later I'm having a drink with H when he describes that exact thing as something he loves to do and asks if I've ever tried it. I freak out majorly, but I bury it. Eventually it eats me up inside and I leave. We broke up not long after and they've been going out pretty much since then. I I quit the band and my job and my friend circle, who all knew they'd been hooking up behind my back for at least a half a year or more. Hardest part wasn't losing her, it was the fact that my best friend betrayed me in such a way, things weren't great between me and the girl and if they'd explained their feelings I'd have probably stepped aside considering me and her had grown apart very quickly. Also killing the band sucked, we did alright for ourselves. But I've since met the love of my life have an amazing set of friends and a great job and my new band have played some great shows in the UK. Too long didn't read, friend moves in with me when he has nowhere to stay, starts hooking up with my GF behind my back. Edit, thanks for all the kind comments and messages redditors. It's sad to see how many people have gone through this or similar. The comment that stands out for me was someone pointing out that by making excuses for me friend being a rat and a cock to others, it was only a matter of time until it came round to hurt me. Don't stand by when your friends do bad things, stand up to them and challenge them, true friends want their friends to grow. But you all are lovely, thank you. So she hated him and then they started fucking? Damn, I bet that first love slash hate fuck must have been incredible. Haha <laughs> brutal. Smiley face. This wasn't your fuck up. You're a good person. Your ex-friend and ex-girlfriend are both major assholes. Thank you, and yeah I agree they're not the greatest of people, but they have each other and the world's an awfully large place so I never have to see anyone from that group again. Damn, that's rough buddy, wish I could say something else. Haha <laughs> cheers man. Was some time ago and it shaped me into a stronger person overall. So he really was a cock. Big time ha ha. Not quite the same but something similar happened to me many years ago. She would come to my place and wait for me to get off work. L, my, then, best friend stayed with me and would be home when she was there waiting. It was just a matter of time and lobster dinner to seal the deal with them. And a lobster dinner. Today I fucked up by pooing on a guy's hand while he was fingering me. So this happened earlier this year in February before lockdown happened. And I'm finally ready to share my shame with you. I met this guy on FetLife. He messaged me and we clicked and started chatting and soon planned to meet up. I was nervous already and the whole drive over to his place I had butterfly stomach, spoiler, it wasn't butterflies. I get there and we hug and start talking pretty easily. He offers me a drink and shows me around his apt. It's clean and he doesn't seem like he's going to murder me and turn my skin into lampshade. We continue drinking more whiskey and soon he pushes me up against the wall in the hallway and we get naked. We have pretty okay sex and then he says let's move to the shower. So we're kissing and he's finger me. Then he turns me around and really starts going at it hard with his fingers. And then I feel it. I feel it come out on its own. I turn my head just in time to see him look down at his hand and casually throw my turd behind.
behind him in the running water. In writing this from the afterlife cause I died on the inside. I started apologizing and I told him I needed a moment to clean up. So he washes his hands and leaves me in the shower. Imagine the air of steaming poop. Cause that's what the bathroom smelled like. After 30 minutes of me trying to wash my literal and metaphorical shame away he comes in and checks on me. He was really chill about it and let me know that he thought it was funny and that he still wanted to see me again. And I wish I felt bad about it but now I see it as his karma catching up to him. I later found out that he gave me a fake name and he had a wife, two children and two dogs. TLDR, met up with a guy who was cheating on his wife and accidentally shit in his hand while he was fingering me from behind in the shower. He cheated on his dogs, exclamation mark. This really made me ugly laugh lololol. Karma is a bitch. It was karma that shat on his hands. Don't worry you didn't do anything wrong. Lol thanks. I finally don't feel deep embarrassment about it anymore. Fair play to him for not caring about the shit because like who should care. It's just something that happens and you just deal with it but also he's a massive wanker and I hate him very much. Hope you're okay. I hate him too and he definitely got what he deserved. And yes, I'm okay now that I can laugh at it. I'd like to believe it was just your subconscious warning you he's a piece of shit, poop. He deserves that shit, don't worry about it up. He definitely deserved the literal shit, lol.